I feel like right now, one of my like current biggest fears that I'm trying to overcome is the fear of being able to be enough for myself. Like, I feel like ever since, like whenever I was little, I was a version of myself that I can look back and attest to. Not to say that like, oh, whenever I was a kid, like that was the best life I've ever lived. But like I was, yeah, like explorative. I was doing a lot of stuff that like piqued my interest. Like I was, yeah, all this stuff. And then for the longest time, because like throughout that stage of childhood, just like so many obstructions to my well-being like posed themselves. Um, instead of exploration i found that like my mind and body and spirit's biggest want was like just placation just whatever it is just take it and table it because i was like struggling to kind of deal with the way that the world was working around me so i just figured that i'd try to like make my mind just like blank enough to be able to like find operation with it and I was talking in another video about like how rotting is necessary sometimes like rotting is very necessary to figure out what your goals and your beliefs and your like priorities are but it's so scary coming out on the other side of that and being in a place where I'm like I'm not rotting anymore and I have the resources that I need to be able to live the life that I want or I have access to being able to get the resources that I need to live the life that I want and it's like terrifying it's terrifying and I felt like um so confused because like the last thing that I would think I would feel in this transitional period of my life is terror like, I'm inches away from having my shit together for the first time in my entire life, and I'm terrified. And I feel like I've been, like, consistently fighting with that feeling because I'm, like, I keep, like, peeking my head up, <laughs> like, above the surface and, like, living a life that it is that I want. And then I keep ruining it for myself because I'm afraid of comfort in something beyond what I've always known. And it's, like, terrifying because I'm, like, well, what the hell do I do now? But then I feel like the biggest thing that I have to remind myself is like, there is no one way for this to happen or for this to play out. But what I cannot do is keep traumatizing myself by putting myself in situations where my mind body and spirit are too still to do the things that it is that I want to do because for the longest I was doing that because it's something that was necessary for survival but now it's not a survival need and I'm like I can't keep I can't keep doing this to myself whenever all that it's doing is diminishing my ability to see myself as someone that can bring all of my like wants for myself into fruition. So I'm like, it's terrifying. It is so scary to like have to step outside of your comfort to find a reality that you've never been in before. But it's like the biggest thing or some of the biggest things, I guess, because there's a couple that help me with this process is like, I will be able to afford myself the chance to experience my childhood in a way that I can attest to. Like, I can indulge in all of the things that I wanted to as a kid, even if it's not the same things, like the same themes. Like, I can explore, I can do all of these things and have that not be something with a million and ten barriers. I can do that and I now have like ways to accommodate myself that I can bring to the table to actually assist that in being like, I don't know, something or another. And it's like terrifying because it's like, like this is real life. Like there's so much that's just coming to the forefront that I've ignored for so long and it feels overwhelming and it feels like another reason to kind of just plunge my back myself back into stillness. But I'm like, this 
is literally what living is about first and foremost it's about full consciousness it's about like letting your imperfection be the driving force of all of your actions not even your imperfection but like the fact that you, letting your individuality being the driving force be the driving force for like all your interactions like it is so weird because i'm realizing like and in a large part i have accepted myself as a person but it's like to be able to find comfort in this i need to be able to find comfort in every square inch of my humanity um not have to like it's not like if i don't do this i can't do that but it's like that's one of the things that it's kind of like a continual learning process while I do this because it's like yes I am shockingly aware of everything that it is that I'm doing but it's also like I can learn to appreciate the beauty in that the yeah learn how to appreciate like the beauty and not knowing what the hell is going on and in being a type of person that I never saw that's one of the other really, really scary things. It's like, I feel like because I'm like a very example led person, like if I see something, I'm like, oh, it can happen. I can do this X, Y, Z. But then I'm like, not everything that I want to do with my life is something that I've seen before. And not every direction that I want to take myself developmentally is something that I see that I have done before to be able to draw reference to in an example or that I've seen other people in my life do. So it's like, I need to like be comfortable like being like a trailblazer but high key it's like it'll come at its time I don't have to be initially comfortable with it I don't have to be even happy about being the only one <laughs> doing something but if I can say that it aided that it aid aided yeah my like well-being and my understanding of myself and my capacity to progress then I can say that it's something that benefits me in a way that I can attest to and like it's also so scary because that's like like one of my big big things is like <laughs> It's like, um, I feel like this is gonna just be hard to describe without actually being like vulnerable, but I feel like vulnerability is so scary for me because I'm like, if I don't progress past this thing, the fact that I put it out into the world and it's something that is, but it's also like, you know what, fuck it. You know what, fuck it. A lot of the time, I only ever care about things. Not even care about things, but I only hold myself to expectations that are being externally reinforced, which is not a good thing. Um, which is definitely not a good thing. But if it's going to help me with this, or even if it... Yeah. But long story short, I just like, yeah, for a really long time, like, abused weed like really bad and like weed isn't like the most serious drug out there but I feel like part of me continually abusing weed was me telling myself that it's not that it could be worse like yeah bitch it could be worse but that doesn't take away from the fact that yeah like I don't like I don't know like I feel like being a very example led person it makes it so that I'm also like a very comparatively led person like if something could be worse I'm like ah to hell with it all what that's crazy because it literally just means that like I just keep pushing myself like I don't have to push the limits to know that something does not serve me I don't have to push the limits to identify that like something does not have a place in my life and I feel like as much as it does terrify me to have said that and to have put that online for like external judgment and evaluation, it feels like a weight has been taken off my chest because for the longest time I'm like, you know what, no, like I'm a chiller XYZ, but I'm like, I don't, substance abuse runs deep in my family and I thought I had evaded it by choosing like the one drug that everyone's like, oh, you can't get addicted, loophole, loophole. And like, yeah, you might not be able to be like chemically addicted, but also 
like anything can be an addiction literally just from the pure fact of like the way that fucking yeah like conditioning works like I need to stop diluting myself out of identifying issues in my life because of the way that I've learned to identify them in like societal way also because I'm like if I am only identifying things from the ways that I've learned how to identify them in like a um society that benefits that profits off of my injury but and from my avoiding not even avoiding but basically in capitalism the only times that your injury um and I don't mean injury like a physical injury I mean like any injury to yourself whether that be mental physiological social any of that but the only times that your injury is seen as something that should be taken with warrant um or should be like addressed with warrant is whenever it's like um whenever it fits into like a category like you don't get time off of work just because you're having like a bad day mentally you get time off of work if you get signed into a mental institution and you get a name slapped on it and you get pumped full of fucking ssris and then you inevitably go crazy off prozac um okay wait (laughs) Cut the cameras. <laughs> and I feel like just like so much rid of because my thing is it's like coming back into myself, like myself in like full sobriety. And it feels so weird to say that because I'm like, I like I don't wanna say like cause if I start smoking again, it could be one of two things. It could either be a serious issue. Or it could be me finally finding a relationship with moderation. Because if weed is something that I can chemically have a relationship with moderation with, then I just need to fix the mental part of it. But it's something that I've realized. Because my biggest thing is like, I'll always be like, oh, you know what? I'm just going to like stop smoking for X, Y, Z amount of time. But then I'll hop back on the train because I'm like, oh, I'm chill with it mentally. Like, I'm at a good place mentally so I can exercise moderation, which is literally just what the fuck I said. But here's the key divide. Here's that divide. I feel like I was not identifying times that I was not able to trust myself with access to weed because I feel as if Like, if the anticipation, if I feel anticipation for it, like, to a degree that overarches kind of, like, any, anything that I could, like, say against it like basically if I'm like oh I don't like that like smoking makes me tired if I were to be like you know what like if I were to have taken a tea break and then I'm about to hop back on the train because I'm like you know what like I don't care if it makes me tired anymore then it makes it so that I am not being legitimate with myself in that decision and I feel like that illegitimacy is what creates the foundation for my patterns of yeah like smoking in the future because it's like whenever I'm not oh and this is so weird oh my god should I even post this online because this is like also the first time that I've fully like been completely real with myself about it um it's scary as fuck and I think oh my god Oh my god. But also I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna take this for what it is because I feel like if I don't post this online, I will probably delete it and 
be like, you know what, it never, not even it never existed, but like, it'll just be another one of like, it'll just be another like conversation with myself that I kind of throw out because it's not, I don't even want to say tangible, but like present, like, I don't know. I want to remember this and I want to kind of hold myself to, I feel like a big, yeah, a big part of coming out of my rotting phase is like remembering. And I say coming out of, I've been kind of out of like the thick of it for like two years now, but like coming out of meaning kind of like dealing with the aftermath of that. Um, but yeah, I feel like I've just lost, um, like a lot of faith in myself to be able to be the person that I know I am happiest with and the person that I know can best achieve all of the goals that it is that I want for this lifetime. Because throughout everything, I feel like my goals, oh, that's what, that's what kills me about my rotting phase. The beginning of it, my goals were so, oh wow. Because my rotting phase, the first half of it was largely like, oh, no, I feel like the entirety of it, because it lasted from like, Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. It was really, really, oh god. Oh my god. What the fuck? That's the weirdest part about not smoking myself silly every day of every second of every hour. It's like feeling in full all emotions. Like, and not to be like, oh, this is like my, cause my thing is like, I'd go like, yeah, like a handful of days without smoking. So it's not like, this is just like what happens every fucking second of every, every hour. But this is like the first time since like a minute ago. Cause I took like a long ass tea break at the beginning of this year. Um, which was really nice, but this is the first time since then that I've been like, oh, you know what? I want to dive back in head first. Because, um, so it's the first time that I'm, like, actually, like, having the mental reasoning for it aligned with the action. So I'm like, oh, there's a lot to be processed. And right now I just feel out, like, a very, like, my biggest fear. Oh, wait, now this makes me happy because thinking about the fact that I already did it and I did it for so long. But I did it with a time limit set on it. So I knew that there was something coming at the end but I think the key difference about this time is I'm not going to set a time limit whenever it's broken it's broken but that does not mean that the clock is reset it literally just means that this is something that I want to do for myself and that I want to maintain for myself and no definitive date can bring an end to that and no because I wouldn't consider it a relapse because I do want to be at a point where I want to, yeah, like use weed just like casually, like just be like a young term bitch. But it's also like right now I can't trust myself with access to it to be able to, yeah, do what I want to do. Because for the longest time I was like justifying it with like just saying that like, you know what, yeah, but I need to like kind of. Like, I feel like I have to find my comfortability within it to do it. But it's also, like, so many situations. Limiting access, where access has been, like, part of a routine, is never going to be comfortable. I don't want to say never, because I feel like that's very definitive. But more times than not, it is not comfortable. At least initially. Like, there is going to be some feeling of discomfort at some point of it. And... But what I've realized is, like, the more comfort that I grow with myself being able to limit access of things that don't serve me, the more I know that I can trust in myself to shape environments around me into what best serves me. And it just makes me so happy because I'm like, this is what I wanted. This is always, just always what I've wanted. 
I've wanted, of course, the good to outweigh the bad and the ugly, but I want to be a present person and I want to be aware of what the hell is going on so that, well, to a degree, <laughs> um, I feel like smoking has really never been the source of my cluelessness. It has just been something that's made it a hell of a lot easier to deal with and something that's made it a hell of a lot more apparent, which is something that I could give up for sure. Um, but also it's like people already know that I'm out of the know, like whatever facade, <laughs> but that's part of the thing. Like, I feel like it's a hard thing for a lot of people to approach the idea of sobriety because you don't like the version of yourself that you had to be whenever you were sober but i feel like whenever you build a new relationship with that person and figure out kind of how to bring your goals into what the fuck what you want them to be while you're sober instead of retreating into your role, the role that you play. Oh, this is so big. This is why this book that I'm reading right now is so fucking crazy because it's literally the, like, it encompasses the whole aspect to me of what this whole life development that I'm going through right now is about. It's about the fact that, like, this girl throughout every stage in her life, she basically tells her story about her life through the roles that she plays in other people's lives like i it, i feel like reading for me has always been so trivial because i really struggle to like connect together things to a bigger picture unless it's like in conversation like if i'm ever talking in conversation someone's telling me about like random bullshit i'm like oh yeah like name to a place like i know what the hell is going on but like with books and then that's where it gets me because movies it's just like up in the air but like um no movies i'm lost books i used to struggle with it a lot and um that's where that like being led by example really comes into play because for the longest time i was like oh i can't do shit with it with movies so i yeah i can't do it with books but then because i told myself oh i can't i just didn't because i didn't try you don't push the limits if you think that the limits are like steel but if you think they're a little malleable if you think that they're like a saran wrap type vibe instead of like a stainless steel, like you can do it. You can 110% do it. Just literally do not set any definitive negative bounds for yourself. I feel like definitive positive bounds. I used to also be a little bit allergic to those because I was like just definitive in any way, shape or form is just not good. But I'm also like, This is uh, the hardest part about bringing myself back into full consciousness. It's like being able to raise my standards for myself and hope beyond what I know for myself means that I am just allowing myself to be full, fully vulnerable to the way that the world works. Like if something bad happens, something bad happens and then I have to fucking deal with it. And I'm like, no, like that's the catch. That's the catch. Like everything is all flowers and roses till you really got to live real life. But it's like, I've realized like, oh, fuck. What was I about to say? I've realized like, wait, what? what? Cause what was I talking about in the first place? Okay, wait, I was talking about, um, oh yeah. It's the fact that like, I am putting the trust, n not even my trust into the world, but I'm letting it be something that I, like I'm, oh my gosh. Cause for the longest time I would just let my feelings be ration because I didn't feel my feelings for so long. Cause I just smoked them away. <laughs> I just smoked them away. Um, but like allowing myself to hold standards for myself means that they can be broken. Oh, they can, and sometimes they will. Sometimes I'm not gonna hit every fucking quota, every f fucking mark for myself, but it's so scary just putting your heart somewhere that it 
can be broken. It is so scary. It is so fucking scary. And that's what me raising my standards for myself is. Um, It sucks because whenever I was younger, I had incredible standards for myself, but because I thought nothing but that could ever be accomplished, I brought them all into fruition. So I feel like as much as it does terrify me to do that again and be vulnerable with myself, I feel like by being able to experience my emotions beyond just rationalization, it will allow me to actually feel them and to be able to apply the logic that it is that I've made around like finding solace in whatever the result is. And it'll allow me to feel that, but to couple that with the narratives that I had to build from kind of being emotionally void. So yes, it's not a good thing to intellectualize your feelings and to replace logic with emotion, but that's what I mean as um, in the sense that like I'm able to live through the lens of my younger self with the tools that my older self collected because now I have learned how to oh be like emotionally progressive but it's like trusting myself to do that again and rebuilding that ability after so long it is so terrifying but I'm also like uh, this is why I'm like I'm so thankful that I took time to just rot for a minute because the transitional stage out of that has literally been nothing but me learning how to and part of the time in rotting was me learning how to like a lot of these things and yes it wasn't in like the absolute perfect like like um circumstance or like version of myself but every single phase that I've ever had in my life has been something that has contributed to my understanding of either myself or how the world works around me so every single one of those things are something that I can bring back to the table but it's terrifying because it's like not even like it's up to me now but like I am choosing to feel those things and I'm choosing to feel vulnerable with the world and I'm choosing to let my reality be one that actually is variable because I feel like for the longest time I'm like embrace variability and yes embrace variability and I still was doing that to a large extent but also like if I'm doing something that I know immediately um counters my ability to be variable like if I know I'm literally just gonna hit the pen and chill the fuck out for like a long time (laughs) then it's decreasing my bounds of what I actually like know variability to be so it's like putting my heart back out there but also I'm like I know that I can do so many of the things that it is that I want to do like out of my rotting transitional stage I got medicated I got um or I learned how to look for the help that it is that I need I learned how to communicate for the help that it is that I need um I developed so many skills that I keep with me now and that are going to and are allowing me to live closer to the way that I want to it's just like putting all those ingredients together is so fucking scary especially whenever the thing at the like the core issue for me everything loops back to having community based needs without a basis for community but it's like for the first time in my whole life this year I have I don't even want to say for the first time in my whole life because there have been other circumstances that I could have built community it's always been in some way, shape, or form, I could have found access to it, but it hasn't been readily provided and I haven't been readily able to operate within it until this year. And I'm like, oh, that's scary, but it's so beautiful. I have had so many interactions that have slowly, literally just by having reminders that like, 
I am not alone. This is not like an individual ass experience. Like other people are also within this experience. Like there is so much going on outside of me. I have more than myself to fall back on. That's the scary part. That is so scary. But I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. And I need to remember before anything else, before self-destruction, before going back to comfort in the name of familiarity, I need to seek fucking community. I need to build community. I need to get comfortable with telling people I am not okay. Can you please come over? We can literally just have a little pamper day. We can do whatever the fuck instead of sitting there and smoking myself silly because I have unresolved emotions that I'm not really willing to talk through. That doesn't mean every single link has to just be like therapizing XYZ because like I'm very like, um, I still have yet to figure out a balance between oversharing and undersharing. Hence, this is one of the big reasons that I feel like I benefit from literally just fucking talking to myself on camera. But um, it's like, I'm allowed to not be okay. And I'm allowed to have that communicated and received by other people. And I'm allowed to look for the resources outside of myself to fix that. Because for the longest time, the issue was... um, yeah i have issues but i don't know how to get them solved and then for the longest time it was um okay i'm gonna placate my mind because i don't know how to solve them but the upstream factors are not being addressed and then it was address the upstream factors still placating myself and then it was realizing that i can't address the upstream factors to the degree that i would want to while i'm still placating myself so i'm just gonna feel it all I'm gonna feel it all. I'm gonna roll with the tide. This is so fucking scary. I'm literally terrified. I'm sitting here terrified, but I'm sitting here so happy that I'm able to feel this terror because it means that I'm not even terror, but like because I've rebuilt my relationship with fear based things and I know that there is no way to motivate myself through fear, it's terror in the face of anticipation. I'm like, anything could happen. I have literally the world in front of me. I'm not sitting here slumped as hell like literally dragging myself through my day i'm sitting here bright and beady fucking eyed like the world is my oyster right now and that terrifies me but i'm like oh my god the world is my oyster right now i have a million and ten things that i could do with my day if i wanted to i don't feel too tired to do a single one of them i feel like i have the energy to do what i want to do i'm like what the fuck then i'm like oh it's really all up to me but it's like now I know that I don't have to just fall back on myself the second I feel overwhelmed. If I feel overwhelmed, no matter how embarrassed I feel doing it, I'm going to fucking reach out. I'm going to seek community. I'm going to put myself in situations where I have to be frighteningly vulnerable to get what it is that I need out of it. Because I know that not only am I gaining something out of admitting my vulnerabilities and gaining my resources. Other people also see that that is something that you are allowed to do whenever you don't feel well within yourself. And then they're able to bring that identification of their own needs into their own life. So a lot of the time, probably tell this by the way that I talk, but I can only, mm, a lot of the time, the way that I have learned to think about improving myself is through the role that I play in other people's life, which once again, not productive, but I feel like the fact that I'm holding that awareness and the fact that I am kind of working against that being how it happens um is something that makes me just like comfortable with where i'm at because it's making it so that i am setting up like a barrier so that i'm not letting that be like maladaptive to my life but then it's also like the acknowledgement that like that narrative is not productive and it probably is making like a maladapted subconscious even if i don't want it to so it's something that i am working against but if i can find positive reflections and long story short one of the other biggest realizations in my life has been like not everything is going to be like across the board tens and it sucks 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 kind of admitting that to myself because i'm like oh fuck like i want everything to be like fine and dandy i want all to be well in the world and all can be well in the world but it's like sometimes like some things not even all like because that sounds sinister i of course the ultimate goal is all to be well in the world but it's like not everything that you need in the moment is going to be everything that you want which means that you shouldn't settle for sure but it means that you are allowed to take something at its form 
and work with it and change it so that it works for you. Yeah. And it's like, it's scary because it's like whenever something is counteracting you so much, you're like, fuck, I want to leave this behind. And you can leave it behind, but you can like change that into something else if that's all that you have the capacity for in that moment. It doesn't have to be like one and done. Like it doesn't have to be like, oh, you leave it behind or X, Y, Z. If you have the capacity for it, work on it. If you don't have the capacity for it, do what you can. Because doing your best is ever so literally, I, I love to say this, doing your best is ever so literally all that you could do. There is literally nothing that you could do than your best. And yeah, I feel like that's also one of the biggest things that kind of like inspired this whole sobriety movement for me because I'm like, I know that I'm not, like this is my best whenever I'm like silly fried, but like whenever I'm like tapped in fried or like, yeah, like sober, like, there's like a lot more that I can like a lot more directions that I can take my day in so it's like I don't know but it's scary it's violently vulnerable it's just the human experience is one of the most terrifying things that I have ever encountered but I'm like you know what I'm gonna dive into it fucking head first because I don't know what awaits me after death but I do know that I want to make the most or maximize every second that I can here not even just like in a oh I want well I of course I want ideally I want all of it to be like bright happy positive but it's like the bad and the ugly that's part of the human experience learning how to grow with that learning how to grow around that learning how to change that and shape that into something different that is part of living and I'm like (gasps) Like, what? But, like, the opportunities that I have to change the world for myself and for the people around me are so endless. And I'm not going to squander that because I want to keep my eyes closed. Yeah. I deserve better than to be on autopilot every day. I have an incredible mind, I have an incredible heart, and I have incredible goals that can take the world to incredible places. A whole lot of bullshit comes out of my mouth, but... Actually, end the sentence. No, psych, I'm kidding. But, like, a lot of bullshit comes out of my mouth, but that's what makes me me. I love just, like, opening my mouth to just say random stuff because it's, like, Half of the time, it doesn't connect and is discombobulated and doesn't make sense. But that's beautiful. I'm allowed to do that. Also, another reason that I'm like, oop, 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 oop. Oh, fuck. That was going to be such a good sneeze too. But um, I feel like one of the big reasons that I wanted to smoke all the time, ever, always, ever, is because I thought that it made me so much more palatable to the public eye but I'm also like fuck a public eye at this point if I'm going MIA for like months at a time just for personal comfort I'm like fuck the eye fuck the eye of it all I need to be like secure within me because I at the end of the day am my only consistent audience so if I can't secure the role that I play wait I have to shit so bad but if I can't control the role that I play or like yeah like feel comfortable in the role that I play in my life then I'm never gonna feel comfortable in the role that I play in other people's lives um but beyond that the role that I play in my life is figuring out how to best make me work in a symbiosis with the world and changing circumstances that just are overarchingly negative for myself and other people so it's like if I want that to be something that I can always attest to, then it means that I am going to, like, adjust accordingly. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna finish this video. Actually, possibly question mark, what the fuck? Um, but yeah, no, I have to shit so bad.